Japanese stereotypes of European countries. You might notice there's some stereotypes that overlap here. For Greece, of course, it's the financial crisis, and for Italy, it's the mafia. Spain is good at soccer, and then why are they putting Portugal on blast like that? No fat people? Out of all the stereotypes that can come out of France, that is not what I expected. Especially considering less than 4% of Japanese people are obese. There's Sweden, who I guess is just getting fetishized, at least for the men, and then Ukraine and Belarus for the women. Finland with just Santa Claus. And then the elephant in the room. Everyone already knows what this is. England isn't spared much either though. Gordon Ramsay's not gonna be happy about this, which is probably why some of this is so blunt. I guess there was even a polling ball reference in there. A similar experience was done in China using Chinese provinces. I think this is their Google equivalent though there, but of course you can't search up to bed. This place is chaotic. These provinces in southern China are poor. Of course, Manchuria, very cold, and they must have very interesting zoos in this place. But the big one here, why is Taiwan unwilling to return? This is definitely one way to learn about a new country. Where public display of no-no German symbols are banned. I wonder if the Hindu version of that symbol is allowed though. So obviously in Germany, you can't just have these out. And actually just in most countries that Germany invaded in general during the 40s. A couple outliers that were occupied, but they didn't ban it. Denmark, Norway, and Luxembourg. Of course, a lot of Soviet states except for Belarus. And it's probably complicated in Finland. Interesting that Brazil doesn't allow it, but a fellow neighboring South American country does. Very curious. I'm sure the exact rules greatly varies from country to country. There's probably a lot of things that go into it. A true size map of Argentina. It's actually much bigger than I expected. I mean, already you're talking about some pretty large European countries. France, Spain, and Germany all fit. And they even managed to squeeze Denmark, Belgium, Czechia, Serbia. Over this way fits the Dutch and Albania. Even Switzerland in the corner. There are a few countries that go outside the Argentinian borders, but for the most part, you can see how much isn't filled up in here. So I think we can let that slide. I actually didn't realize the Falkland Islands were almost as big as Slovenia. My biggest question here, though, is why is this flag so terrifying? I feel like I've done so many meme posts about this that it's a little difficult to take this one seriously but I guess someone found an old map at their grandma's house but let's figure out how old it really is now of course right away this is a very thick Germany thicker than present day and Poland is gone so there clearly has been an invasion that's taken place but there is no Austria Hungary so this tells me we are definitely around the World War II time period obviously Austria was probably just Auschwitz and the Czechia part of Czechoslovakia is uh well someone just got eaten Hungary extended into Romania, so this has got to be like 1939, 1940. It's going to be kind of difficult to be exact here, but it's around one of those two years. What's interesting is that maps are changing so drastically at this time that there actually might be an error. I'm imagining everyone having to buy a new map every six months to see the new updates. <laughs> But as soon as you buy it, things are already going to be kind of out of date. General consensus in these comments is that it was the year 1940, but the month is confusing. Recognition of Israel and Palestine in Europe. And there is clearly a very big divide. Most of Western Europe only recognizes Israel, although the Vatican recognizes both. Also, Iceland does as well. Sweden is the Scandinavian outlier. They still recognize Palestine. But all of the Baltics is just Israel. As always, the Balkans are very complicated. Fascinating to see why this would be. And then for the most part, everyone out here in the East is unanimous in recognizing both, except for Moldova. Oh, the Isle of Man does both as well. Because the map labeled recognizes Palestine in green. I was seeing if there was just a green country. I can't find anything, though. Strange to see this map kind of mirror the old Cold War borders in Europe. Oh, so there are actually green countries that only recognize Palestine, but of course, this stuff is constantly changing. It might be out of date, and none of them happen to be green in Europe, mostly in the Middle East and Africa, and a lot of South American countries. There's probably so much that goes behind every country's decision here. Speaking of maps that probably need Need yearly updates though. Which US states pay more to Washington DC than it receives versus which states receive more from Washington than it pays? That's kind of a mouthful. I hope that made sense. Courtesy of CGP Gray. So this is going to kind of come down to GDP. So of course, California is in the green. So is like Texas, Florida, and New York. Those states all make a lot of money. They also have large populations. So Illinois, also green. They pay more to Washington. But there's definitely several other factors that go into this. Very confused about what's going on in Rhode Island though. They apparently pay exactly the same amount of money that Washington DC returns to the exact penny. There's probably a story behind all of these states and their color. Interesting that both Alaska and Hawaii are red, though. I guess those states don't necessarily have the most GDP, but I don't know. I thought Hawaii made a lot of travel dollars. This, of course, is a little old, so might not reflect exactly what's going on in 2022. This person drove around the entire continent of Africa. It took him 999 days, or almost three years. I believe this person started in Morocco and went all the way down the coast, visited several of these sub-Saharan 
Sub-Saharan African countries all the way down to South Africa. I'm curious about the interesting route down this way. And visited so many countries here on the eastern coast of this continent. Terry reached all the way back, visited the pyramids in Cairo, Egypt. I would love to do something like this one day. I can't even begin to imagine the amount of things you would learn and see. This person has a channel too, you can go check them out. Desktop OS market share. We're only started in 2003. Would have been interesting to see like back in the 90s, although I'm sure Windows was really dominating them too. In 2008, it was Windows XP. Wait, what about Windows 7? Oh, here it comes in 2009. Also, Vista getting eaten up. And here comes Mac. And so I'm assuming that that's really going to start to explode. Windows 8. Yeah, wasn't Windows 7 way bigger than Windows 8? I knew Windows 7 had a very long lifespan. It wasn't until like 2018 that Windows 10 finally passed up Windows 7. Mac is still struggling to get a quarter. I actually thought they'd be maybe, I don't know, bigger than 15% by now. Linux is also, you know, it's small, but it's gathering up a little bit of a fan base. I'm just now using Windows 11, but I do still miss Windows 7. There's a Chrome OS now? I wonder what this other is. The first professions of all the chief ministers of India. This is already so interesting. I'm immediately drawn to Guitarist here by Bangladesh, and then Stand-Up Comedian on the other side of things. I mean, that probably does help him with his public speaking. Is there anything greater than being a magician first? Shopkeeper sounds pretty nice. That's some real world experience. I feel like it's not super common for doctors to get into politics. Um, do I even want to know? And then all this read, our politics was the first profession. That just seems strange to me. I feel like you got to get a different type of job and then go into politics. So I'm trying to be the first YouTuber president one day. This is such a cool map. I'd love to see more countries broken down like this. Most played games by state. Red Dead Redemption 2, unsurprising for Texas. Fork knife in California. What the hell is Hawaii doing in the Gulf of Mexico? Either way, they like these two. Or wait, no, I don't even think Hawaii has anything. Pretty sus of you, South Carolina. Delaware, New Jersey, and Connecticut with the Batman Forever Genesis game. For some reason, New York's favorite game being Resident Evil 4 makes a lot of sense. Family game night for Massachusetts. I don't know about you guys, but I always thought Skyrim took place in Indiana. This says a lot about you, South Dakota. Wait, this has got to be the most accurate thing. Thank you, Alaska. And you can definitely 100% trust this map, that's for sure, because the reason Researcher involved, very accurate. I'm sure it took him a long time to come up with all this information. Actually, I think he did talk about his sources. My sources that I made it the f up. What does it take to move 1,000 people? So to move 1,000 people, it could take just one link train with four cars. You could also use 15 buses. That seems like kind of a lot. Or there's always the option of using 625 regular vehicles. Car option also requires over five acres of parking at both start and destination. I was just learning about how like 50% of Houston is just parking parking lots. A lot of cities are just parking lots. Before I started traveling to other places, cars is really all I knew. In California, we really like cars. Then I went to cities with good public transit, and then I'm like, oh, oh yeah, this is way better. I feel like this doesn't tell the true story. I mean, first of all, this train would be super packed. I mean, you could probably fit four people in each car easily, so that brings it down to 250, but I still see the point. This is why even though I live only like 20 miles from LA, I don't ever go into LA. Like, I know I'm going to be trapped there all day. You cannot escape the traffic. Territories of the Roman Empire and the approximate number of years it remained in the empire. So even though Rome began in the Italian peninsula, they obviously kept the eastern part of the Roman Empire or Byzantium for a lot longer. So the territories that were held the longest is actually in modern day Greece. And of course, things on the outskirt wasn't held for very long, like up here in Scotland, less than 50 years. Same for this region in Germany. And I don't even know why they had this stuff so deep in the Sahara Desert. What were they doing with that? Pretty much the further away they got from the Italian peninsula, the less likely they were able to hold it for. They actually didn't hold parts of Romania for as long as I expected either. They held Crimea for over a thousand years? Like that's something I didn't expect. I've seen these maps of the rise and fall of the Roman Empire many times, but this is an interesting way to display it all. Like they really liked the southern part of Iberia. I mean, it's not really about liking and not liking, but they kept a hold of it for a lot longer than Galicia, like twice as long. I love how this map really paints a picture of like the slow collapse of the Byzantine Empire. You can see from the numbers how they just had just a little chunk of territory and they just slowly, slowly began to lose it all. A little surprised they kept Egypt for 650 years. Now I'm just thinking about how the German Reich was supposed to last like a thousand years and it lasted like five. It's hard to even fathom just how long this empire was around for. There's still so much I need to research about this time in history. All the cities that are still inhabited that are older than the United States in the United States. So basically all these places were founded before 1776. And unsurprisingly, the vast majority of them are found in the former territory of the 13 colonies. Obviously, we were first a British colony, so every city that was built is going to be older than the USA. Remember, this map is specifically looking at the cities that are still inhabited to this 
day though. Now as for all the other locations that aren't in that territory, it gets a little bit more complicated. So remember the French had French Louisiana down here, which I think explains these bubbles. Spain had Florida, so I think that's why these two are here. Spain also had Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and California, which I think explains for the most part all these. Of course the Russians had colonies in Alaska, but it's still amazing people still live down here in this island. A little surprised that Hawaii isn't included though. I mean technically they were people living on Hawaii, I'm pretty sure. There's actually a nice list of North American settlements from oldest to newest. We also can't forget about the Native Americans. They are also responsible for a lot of the bubbles on the map. And to be honest, this post probably doesn't really include all of them. I have a feeling there's actually a lot of settlements that are still missing and that are probably still at least slightly inhabited. I love that the Alaska location is actually called Un-Alaska. I literally thought that was a meme. And this place was actually around way before the Russians got there. And yeah, I feel like Hawaii does deserve at least one bubble since the Polynesians first arrived there at 1100 AD. And that's just in this specific island or that city specifically. They got to the islands themselves at 400 CE. I don't even know what to believe anymore. And big thanks to my patrons. Isaac, I guess. Australia's Susius Chungus. Ashton Powers Faja. Hey, Susos, man. A uh, fat. My name is Joe Biden. I love fat being Joe Biden. Drew's Argentinian grandpa. Cowboys 83. Bring back Poland. Barnsky W. Good old I Raya. stole Drew's pet dog. Jakov Luxembourg. Bruni, Marco Hendetta. 5610. Fresh animation. Rise. E. The Mexican Why am I doing this? And William the Conqueror.